Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is one of India's leading theatre directors and researchers. He's a legend and an icon, famous for more than a hundred productions that he has directed and created. The list is a long and illustrious one, Andhayug, Pygmalion, Einstein and so it goes on. He's been a director of the National School of Drama and a dean at the Punjab University uh, Department of Drama. Uh, he works and writes with great passion uh, in the theatre. I'm delighted to welcome the great legend, Mohan Maharishi. Thank <laughs> you, Rajiv. Thanks a lot. Uh, tell me that you have spent a lifetime pursuing this great ambition, this great vocation, this great passion uh, of the theatre. Uh, what is, the, what is sort of the, the personal gratification uh, that you get as a uh, theatre director, as a theatre researcher, in a climate where most people still see, uh, you know, people in the theatre as being destitute, as being struggling for survival. So there must be something that keeps you going. What is that? Well, it's, <sighs> hard. it's hard to pinpoint. But the fact is that... Uh, Theatre has given me a great kick all the time. And perhaps the reason is that it's a live performance. And uh, for that moment we live when the audiences, live audiences, react to your work. And uh, not just react, but participate in the performance actively. They may be sitting quietly in certain performances, but then they are inwardly participating in a performance because live actor always involves them. And it's the live audience's reaction towards the end, whether it's, it's a downright condemnation or it's, it's a sort of, uh, they, they sort of welcome you, they are enthused by it and all that. That moment is a great moment, I think. But you know, as, 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 as a theatre perfectionist, academic who's working in the highest tune to take, pushing the boundaries of theatre, uh, you know, I, well, on this program we get so many uh, kind of creative people, artists, musicians, who inevitably tend to mourn, you know, the standard and the, and the caliber, in a sense, uh, of audiences, and say that they, you know, they're changing because of television, because of film, and that, uh, you know, performances and what you do is, is having to adjust uh, to the corrupting influences of what's happening in the rest of, for the, you know, the, the larger cultural environment to audiences. I completely disagree with that, Rajivji, because I think there is an audience for all kinds of things in, in, in this country. And a good theatre has its own niche and its own audiences. It might be much less in proportion from, from let's say, commercial cinema or even television, where you have the captive audiences with you. But there is always the lure of the actor, lure of the or the live actor, which brings them in, in, into the theater. If you do good theater and meet standards of people, they are appreciative of it. What is good theater? Because uh, in India we see so much of theater that is translation, we're still doing, you know, look back, translating, look back in anger a zillion times, we're doing Shakespeare in translation and, you know, what have you. Uh, not enough of our theater seems to you know resonate the you know the pulse of the people the contemporary predicaments contemporary vocabulary and we're still going back to storylines of western classics which in some senses of course have a universal appeal and then modifying it and presenting it uh, here so what is good theater surely it's something more than good performance good direction it has to be theater that in, in some ways you feel is, is is reflective of your predicaments your stories enriches your understanding I of think life. I completely agree with you. The thing is that uh, good theatre, I have a very simple de definition. It should relate to my audiences. I believe that theatre, which is done for extra theatrical, uh, well, ambitions, uh, that is a false theatre. So what are theatrical ambitions? The theatrical yeah. ambitions right now, for example, is to produce a kind of a universal theater which can, which, uh, which has no local references or something, which can easily be detached from the local references and then 
uh, go global or something like that. This is the latest. I believe that good theatre, good Indian contemporary theatre is that theatre which relates directly to the audiences around me. And it is so much local that ultimately it becomes universal. But first the theatre has to relate to the audiences. I do not believe in kind of performances which cannot attract 15 people, 10 people, 5 people in their own cities, but have a large audience abroad. I do not believe in it. I think theatre, by its very nature, the medium belongs to the people and to lay people, lay people in the sense that you do not need any special articulation. For example, to appreciate good music, our classical music, our classical dance, you need a certain amount of articulation for that. I, I don't mean to say that you don't need any articulation for the theatre, but theatre grows with the people, with the audiences, and it lifts the audiences into a kind of a region where they are able to uh, relate with what you are presenting uh, to them. It lifts, it, it, it grows its, its universal quality, its artistic quality actually is achieved through the participation of the people. So lay people also have a, have a say in it, have a, have a sort of a, uh, not only have a say, but an attraction in it. You're watching a conversation with uh, the theatre director, researcher, writer, translator, Mohan Maharishi. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Mohan Maharishi. Uh, we were talking about um, the theatre and, 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 and the performer on stage. Um, you know, amongst the things that you know that you're working with, of course, are that you know, there is the quality of you know real time. You know, you don't get the juxtapositions and the cuts and the breaks and what have you uh, of of, uh, of of cinema. Uh, you know, there, there are various sort of you know approaches to theatre um, as in theatre direction. Do you tend to be a very precise director with very sort of with, 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 with very clearly articulated, defined uh, responses, movements, positions uh, on the stage? Uh, and, 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 and to what degree is, is it sort of you know, spontaneous and unfolding and, 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 and do you give the actors freedom? And what are the advantages of the two, two methods? I mean, in the sense that obviously that if it's very carefully structured of the actors having a bad day, he still knows what to do. Uh, <laughs> whereas if you've surrendered uh, you know, to the performance on stage, then it's that much more dependent on inspiration. How yes. do you strike a balance? Yeah, I think uh, um, theater is an actor's medium. It is not a director's medium in that sense. Director comes in very forcefully in the initial stages of the rehearsals. One of the finest uh, definition is given by Peter Brook. I liked it, though it's, it's also a bit limited, but it does not completely describe an air director's job. But it comes quite close to it. And that is that a director is a person who replaces live audiences in rehearsal situation. Mm -hmm. He is separating the rehearsal situation, which is very important, with the performance situation. So in rehearsals, you are sitting there not just to provide the framework, a very tight framework, certainly not. You provide a framework, you lead your actors into uh, nuances and all that. You come hugely on top of them in the beginning, but then there is another process. All clever directors know that they need to with start withdrawing bit by bit, bit by bit, and ultimately tell them that the final responsibility now is yours a week before the performance. So the actor knows, oh, there is nobody to support me. The terror that actor feels of, of then, of being you know, left in the middle of the whole thing by the director is very creative. And you take a certain amount of risk. Mm. It's a big embarrassment mm. if you if he's not able to perform or something, but you have to trust your actors, back them to the full, mm -hmm. and only show in their last uh, mm -hmm. stages, only show great confidence in them, give them confidence. 
I think you've, you know, you've, picked, you've uh, sort of pushed some you know, very exciting buttons for me personally, at least, in terms of you know, Peter Brook. Uh, you know, Peter Brook is someone who works very intensely with the, with the actor uh, and, and, and sort of cultivates the most complex internal processes in actors. Uh, so it's, it in a sense goes far beyond just directing. You know, he becomes therapist, he becomes psychologist, uh, leading actors to, you know, confront situations into insights and understanding uh, that then translate and, 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 and sort of come to fruition uh, in a performance. How many directors have the, A, have the ability and B, have the luxury uh, to be m more than, you know, orchestrators of a performance? You see, uh, <laughs> the luxury is not available to many directors. Mm -hmm. Peter Book is a star of international theater and has almost everything to, uh, possible that a director can have. I'm talking about the recent past when he did Mahabharata. At that time, he was the lord, you know, he just commanded so much respect, money, any resource. I mean, he was given a completely free hand. But one thing I noticed when I saw the premiere of Mahabharat, I immediately noticed that this kind of total access to resources and this kind of complete respect from the, from the audiences and the organizers and the people who are funding ultimately proves the limitation not to his strength. A director needs to work under some pressure, under, under some limitation, and uh, sometimes lack of means or lack of resources becomes, forces you to become innovative. I have seen much better work done by him in England when he was complaining about three weeks rehearsal time, limited time in the theatre, because theatre costs hugely in England and West and here too. It's impossible for any... So what is your greatest uh, lack and pressure? Uh, I mean, you know, apart from, you know, obviously the material ones, you know, money, rehearsal space and, 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 and auditorium and, and equipment and facilities, uh, would you say it's sort of the lack of good writing, good scripts, good material? Because ultimately, uh, as a director, and, and, you know, you do translation work, and I've seen your you know, performance of Othello, which I will come to in a bit, um, you, know, you have to access what somebody else has, has written or you know, translate and try to make it relevant and make it local so that it's, it's, it's universal in a sense. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that's one of your major challenges? Well, first of all, I'll say that doing Othello was not an effort of making something uh, relevant to the people of, uh, of, of this country because mm -hmm. Othello is a different kettle of fish altogether. Shakespeare is, is mm -hmm. and it's just a cliche to say that he's such a wonderful universal playwright mm -hmm. but he's also one would discover very local to his his mm -hmm. uh, uh, his kind of London that he was working in. Mm -hmm. uh, Secondly, I think the pressures that are generated here are all those pressures, you know, even practical things if you don't have a proper rehearsal space, all those things build tremendous amount of uh, stresses and pressures. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, there is the pressure of your people. Because you are going, you are taking a risk, you are going public with something. Theatre is a social art, it's, it's, it's uh, Production is done socially. You can't do it alone. You have to have a group. In a sense, That's it's an a industrial social situation. product, as even as it is. Yeah, the product is a social product is made in a social situation and presented in a social situation. So that I think brings the pressure on. The other things that you mentioned, lack of scripts and things like this, certainly I wholeheartedly agree with you. That because of you know, lack of resources and other things. The good writers are not anymore writing beautiful theatre. You see one good play, Little Flame, somewhere here and there, and that spark just vanishes. We are, as a society, not theatrically educated enough to nurture that talent, to give him the lift that he requires in initial stages so he can write great plays. Nonetheless, after independence, in the post-independence period, we have had uh, five great plays at least who match any Indian standards. And they come from Vijay Tendulkar, 
from Mohan Rakesh, from Dharmveer Bharti, Andhayog, and then Begum Barway. I think these are some of the finest examples of, of contemporary Indian theatre. So even then, you see some playwrights are coming up. And I say that they are very established and for a long time after Girish, after Rakesh, after Badal Sarkar, after Vijay Tendulkar and Satish Alekar, we haven't had a, a, had a, a tremendous playwright. There is a gap. But it only appears so because people are writing very well. And we are not just depending on, on uh, translations and things like that. There is no need to be defensive about it. But, the, but there I would certainly uh, agree with you that the, re the weakening of the regional, th uh, regional languages, regional literature has caused a national deficit. You're watching a conversation with uh, the theatre director, researcher, writer, translator, Mohan Maharishi. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Come back to continuing conversation with Mohan Maharishi. As a theatre director, and we're you know, already talking about the lack of uh, enough good writing that's regional and hence intensely local and hence intensely universal, um, ultimately, theatre writing is, is, is words, the, you know, the end of a, of, a, of a complex internal process. And what you get as a, as a director is a script, uh, which is usually words and some uh, stage directions in it. And you're getting this, 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 this huge sort of psychology, psychological processes that lead to the end product of the word. And that, I suppose, is a space that the director has, you know, to interpret and innovate and, and expand on that. And, and, you know, we've been talking about Peter Brook. And, and when it becomes mere words, it becomes, as his phrase, dead theater. And what people like you are doing, and, and I think your contribution, is making that come alive. Through. So when you do a fellow and you come up with you know, complex or a new interpretation working backwards from Iago or what have you, that you're adding value to it. Uh, how complex, how demanding uh, is this process and, and how much of a key is this to uh, a director's role? And would I be right in saying that this is really the key contribution that uh, you know, a director makes and adding real value uh, to a performance, to a script, to a play, to a production, beyond the orchestrating of it. I mean, you may come up with a clever set and you know, lighting, was whatever, whatever, whatever. Yes. Um, you see, uh, any good director knows and appreciates the fact that words given to you by howsoever a great, great playwright he may be, have to be rediscovered, refound, and that actor has to do it. The word, written word, is dead. It sits up, stands up, it starts dancing in 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 the in the voice of an actor. It acquires different meanings and all together. Um, well, sometimes that meaning is is not the meaning of the playwright or the intention of the playwright. But good playwrights sets the, 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 the word in such a way that the word acquires a special relationship with the processes, internal processes of, of an actor. Now, once it comes to the actor, he owns it, he absorbs it, he drinks it, he, it goes and informs his, uh, his uh, system as it were, and then it is externalized. So it gets an additional power. I have seen a very good, some very fine world actors working uh, with the texts. I saw a rehearsal in which a very senior actor, Sir John Gilgood, retired into a corner. I had, non I had the honor of seeing him rehearsing. Retired. And suddenly, you see, there were other actors and he was participating. But in the rehearsal, he retired into a corner and repeated the word night, night, night. 
he allowed that word to go into the higher recesses of his mind, then charge when he came back, mm -hmm. then externalized it, mm -hmm. it had a different feel altogether. So that's the actor has a very special relationship with word. And words are one part of, of the theatrical language. It's only just one part. The, it is it is reacting with the space, it is reacting with the audiences, it is reacting with other actors, it is uh, uh, it is reacting to the sets. But the word is what the playwright Gives provides you. you. Have you worked with, uh, what has been the experience working with a playwright who's actually carrying through uh, a performance of something he's written and then is there and is available to articulate Yes, uh, you know the intentions and the process. Well, I again. had that luxury only <laughs> once, and that was with Mohan Rakesh, as long as he was alive. When we were together, it was a short period, but it was a very productive period. Mm -hmm. He would read his scripts to me and some other friends, mm -hmm. first time, mm -hmm. and then gauge our reactions. Mm -hmm. And he himself read it very beautifully. Um, and then he was available in the, in the rehearsals, and. Uh, well, that is not always a great situation because you're the playwright breathing down your neck. You're not able to <laughs> do things, you know, and a personality like Mohan Rakesh. But then ultimately the results were good. There were quarrels, heated arguments and, you know, as if it's a warlike situation. But ultimately you stand on your own and you say, no, it's going to be like that. Mm -hmm. And but the, the, the interaction, no matter what kind of shape it takes, ultimately helps. I had that luxury only once. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mostly in the first part of my career, I was doing plays which were ri already written, mm -hmm. then improvising. Then came a third phase when I was so tired of something that was available to me mm -hmm. that I thought one will have to venture into writing something that one wants to do. The frustrating thing was that the discipline was not, uh, the subject itself was not progressing. Subject of theatre was not progressing. In a meeting at the National School of Drama, after I left NSD, in a meeting I said that, uh, you know, for the last 10,000 years, if you, if you realize, of, and then after five, especially after 5,000 years of the Greeks to, Indian theatre and all that, the classical Indian theatre and classical Greek. Since then, mm -hmm. we have been writing about very limited themes. And we are depending far too much on, on the materials outside the discipline of the theatre. There are things which, which are extremely theatrical. An interdisciplinary approach is possible in the theatre and something that just does not describe, a, let's say, a scientific phenomenon, but makes it, turns it into a theatre. So what I becomes the, you know, the, the, the aspiration of a, a, a theatre director uh, such as you, you know, well-known, established, respected, to the degree that it is possible in theatre in India with all its limitations to be able to, you know, muster reasonable resources and to do what you what you like, Just as much as is possible. In, in, in the context of that, do you, do you seek uh, sort of ever higher um, sort of levels of, of perfection to bridge the gap between you know, conception and execution? Uh, you still think, you know, feel there are still things that you want to say. What is the sort of the single you know, sort of core that drives you? Frankly, I, I, I don't know what, what drives me, but uh, I think there are a whole lot of things which drive you. You live in a, in a society, your skin is bare to all kinds of influences, and you continuously read, 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 write, think, ideas come to you. And it's a, it's a kind of uh, symbiosis in which you are living under under various kinds of stresses and pressures and tensions. Within that, you feel that this time, this is the time for me to say this thing. And then you look for scripts. If there is nothing written, then you create one. 
It could be an improvised thing. You could start with something with the actors and so on. If it works, good enough. Otherwise, you don't do it. So the impulse is having that something to say and saying it in response to whatever triggers it, yeah. as opposed to or along with this grasping for perfection. As, yeah, you know. the perfection is another matter, you see. That is where uh, today the frustration is. The, that you always seem to fail continuously because the, the word perfection is, means just that, perfection. Now, to be able to reach that point, it is difficult because of the situation, the economics of the theatre is bad. Let's face it, it's very bad. Good actors, capable actors who have potential, who can grow into, into perfect artists in the theatre, not available after a point. We well, have to conclude this on a, on, on a positive affirmation rather than one of despair. <laughs> Tell me, what is the sort of, the, 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 at this stage in your career, what is the most optimistic, positive aspect that you see uh, in, in, in your environment and as you work uh, to th in, in theatre? The positive, everything is positive. <laughs> everything in my, in my environment is positive. Even the stresses are positive. Uh, and the thing that I mentioned, that reaching perfection or taking the discipline further, taking the subject further, becomes extremely difficult because of the resources and so on. But I do feel that if you are at it, that you stick to the job, ultimately you get it done. Well, Maharishi, thank you very much. Ultimately, you get it done. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. This has been thank great. You, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.